Hey there, good people. It's stocks, crypto, and trending news updates with Josh. At the end of the video, I'm going to give you guys all a recap of our ongoing verb trade. Before I begin, I would like you guys to please hit that like button for me. Remember, anything I say is for educational purposes. I'm not telling you guys what to buy or sell. The goal of my page is always to take the complicated terminology in crypto and trading and news events and break it down for you guys in simple to understand language. If that's for you, then hit the subscribe and the notification bell and join the family. Well, the Fed says we're not in a recession and all 11 of the S&P sectors have basically been on the rise since. Is there more upside to come or are these markets just building up to hit a wall? I want you to listen to this short clip and then I'm going to break it down for you guys. Do you believe the United States is currently in a recession? Uh, will the GDP reading tomorrow affect that judgment one way or the other? And has your assessment of the risk of recession changed any in recent weeks? So... I don't, I do not think the U.S. is currently in a recession. Um, and the reason is there are just too many areas of the economy that are, that are performing, uh, you know, too well. And, and of course, I would point to the labor market in, in particular. Uh, as I mentioned, it's true that growth is slowing. And for reasons that we understand, really, the growth was extraordinarily high last year, 5.5%. We would have expected growth to slow. There's also more slowing going on now. But if you look at the labor market, you've got growth, I think, payroll jobs averaging 450,000 per month. That's a remarkably strong level for, for this state of, uh, of affairs. The unemployment rate at near a 50-year low at 3.6 percent. All of the wage uh, measures that we track are running very strong. So this is a very strong labor market, and it's just not consistent with, you know, 2.7 million people hired in the first half of the year. Uh, it doesn't make sense that the economy would be in recession with, with this kind of thing happening. So uh, I don't think the, the U.S. economy is in recession right now. So one thing he said was growth last year was great and growth this year is slowing down for reasons we all understand. He then went on to say that we simply had too high of an employment rate to be in a recession. The markets rallied after the Fed spoke and they shook off all the missed earnings reports that we've had this week. So let's take a moment and listen to a reaction clip on what the Fed said. Well, we start off with that Fed fueled rally on Wall Street, all three major indices closing near their highs of the day after Jerome Powell said the central bank could slow the pace of hikes. The S&P jumping 2.6 percent, the Nasdaq soaring more than 4 percent. And check out some of the individual names surging today. Alphabet, Microsoft moving on the back of earnings, both stocks posting their best day since April 2020. But then after the bell, Best Buy warned cutting guidance for the year as it sees weaker demand with Apple reporting tomorrow. May not be a good omen there. Well, today proved to be a bear market mirage. Guy. Hi, Melms. Well, you got to listen again. Let's go back to June 15th. Last time we heard from Chair Powell, uh, the market rallied. The next day, the market got whacked on the back of the Swiss National Bank. But collectively, we said, you know what? So much pessimism. The market's probably going to rally into Apple earnings. Thought 4,100 got close today. I'll stand by that. You know, I think today was the day that, you know, it's going to sort of culminate with this Fed meeting talking about uh, slowing the pace. Good luck with that. So you heard it. Markets are likely to rally into Apple's earnings. I want you to keep in mind we are 11 percent off of June market lows, but I don't personally believe that the bottom is in. Let's take a moment to cover the GDP number. Watch this clip, and in the end, I'm going to give you guys my conclusions, and I'm going to touch on some stock. Markets uh, looking for a way to react to this. What 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 were the t what's the takeaway from uh, from that number in your view, Anastasia? I think it's actually the exactly the number and the details of the number that the Fed wanted to see. I mean, look, they're trying to engineer a slowdown in the good sector of the economy, in the inventory sector of the economy, in the structures sector of the economy. And that's exactly where we saw the pullback uh, in this GDP report. One thing that Fed Chair Powell said yesterday is they want to bring down demand in certain sectors while supply catches up. So that's exactly what this GDP number shows. Now, if you look through the other details of it, if you extrapolate private inventories, the GDP actually would have been positive and consumption, the 70 percent of this basket is up 
percent. So I think that's exactly the recipe that the Fed sees to bringing down inflation, but at the same time achieving some sort of softish landing. And I think that's what the markets are recognizing here. That's why you're not seeing a whole lot of movement in the futures. And I suspect that as we move past this report, we'll focus on the fact that the Fed is now going from this emergency state of rate increases to something a little bit more normal. And that something a little bit more normal should actually be positive for stocks in the second half of the year. So we have to answer, are we in a recession or not? Well, there are two primary ways to measure recession. The first is the basic rule of thumb that says if we have two consecutive quarters of declining GDP, which we have confirmed this week that we do, and the second is if we have rising unemployment, which the Fed told us this week that we do not. It's actually not official until eight experts who call themselves the Business Cycle Dating Committee, they get together to confirm whether a recession has actually begun. They look at more data to make their decision. They look at things like personal income. We heard the Fed, he kind of referenced that in his speech, as well as looking at the unemployment rate, the industrial production rate, as well as retail sales. We saw that Walmart confirmed a slowdown in sales. So a lot of these things are beginning to line up potentially for a recession. The problem that we have is that it's just not been confirmed yet. Typically, the rule of thumb process, as well as the committee process, they normally agree, but not always. Because all of these factors have not come into agreement. That's why we're not seeing a strong reaction to the data points this week, as so many people expected. So I believe that we may be in a sweet spot in the markets. There has been a reference to this idea of a Goldilocks environment or maybe just a temporary positive moment. I want to break down to you guys the idea of a Goldilocks reference. So Goldilocks and the three bears, right? She went and she tested the different types of porridge. One was too hot, one was too cold, and one was just right. And that's the one that she ate up. So when you hear them say on uh, Wall Street or on CNBC that is this a Goldilocks environment, they're basically saying, is this somewhat of a moderate environment, a more palatable environment? So the conditions are not too hot one way or too cold the other. And that's, that's basically what we're looking at this week. That could lead to us a more bullish move in the markets. I think that what we've seen this week overall is moderate enough news as well as moderate enough positive earnings reports that it's allowing the markets to move either sideways in some cases and in others allowing them to move to the top of the risk range in the market overall. I'm still expecting though that, that there's going to be a correction back to the downside. I don't believe this is the pivot that many people have been talking about or referencing. It is more likely just an extended bear market rally. The markets do trade algorithmically, and I think we are simply haven't hit the top of some of the local trends. And then after we do, we may go down to retest the lows. I would love to be wrong about that. We simply don't have enough data to know for sure one way or the other. So as a default, we are likely just going to move range bound until we get a greater consensus on all this data. What I do know is it's not smooth sailing for the rest of the year, but I'm still confident that we're going to have a better second half than we did on the first half. I'm going to cover Amazon and Apple's earnings tomorrow. In a nutshell, they were basically better than anyone had feared, and that seems to be the theme of the week. Cloud services for Amazon were good, and like my video on Google Cloud services, they point to a big future profitability for these companies. So when we get through these recessionary times, cloud service is going to lead these guys to big growth. All right, let's talk about Verb. If you are new and you wanna follow the Verb Small Account Challenge, there is a link to Mumu in the top pinned comment of this video. Download that. You're gonna get up to six free stock if you deposit $100. Now, you're going to put in $200, and our goal has been to can swing $200 and turn it into $400. I want to touch base on where we're at right now. I want to remind everybody that we have a defined risk range right now of $0.29 cents to $0.89. Cents. So I'm going to approximately refer to it as $0.30 cents to $0.90. Cents. So we've pulled back, and where are we at? We're roughly around $0.60. Cents. So we've pulled back to the middle. Now, it's okay if you buy in right here, okay? 
but you want to break up your orders. You have twice, many of you have twice as much money to be working with doing this a second time. So continue to break up your orders into $50 at a time. And if you even bought in at 64, 60, 55, and 50, you don't want to be in your entire position until you get much closer to the 50 cent range. Remember, those who did the best in this last uh, small account challenge run up are the ones who got at the lowest price. Right now, we're calling 50 cent the lowest price. Now, but keep in mind that the absolute bottom of the range is 30 cents. If these markets fell apart, it could absolutely fall back to the 30 cent range and retest its all time low. I'm not sure it's going to happen, but you don't want to be 100% in above 50 cents. You want to be halfway in above 50 cents and you want to see if that holds. It would be far better to pick up some more as it rose in price than to be entirely in at 60 cents and see it come all the way down to 30 cents. So keep that in mind moving forward. I think there's going to be the opportunity for us to take profits on some of our trades in the next couple of weeks, I think it's very possible that we're going to still see some upward movement. So keep that in mind. If you guys don't want to miss out on my crypto and my stock picks, then hit that subscribe and the notification bell. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Take care.